The Tactic Showroom is open for business this week as we've decided to give Aaron the chance to strut his stuff once more. So, Aaron, what have you got for us today? Well, today we are going to be looking at the box formation. Nice. I've tried this. Tried it. Tried being the operative word. <laughs> the Brazilian box, the Samba Square. It's got different names, but ultimately, what does it mean and how does it look? Well, the look of it, it's a flat back four. And then what we are going to have, it's two defensive midfielders. And now this is where it's kind of your preference. You can go for two central midfielders or go for two attacker midfielders, which is a bit risque. So I'm going for two central midfielders today because the, the aim of this as well is, of course, many of us are not going to be the most elite team. So I'm trying to design something that you can use at Manchester City, but you could also use at mid-table. I don't want to name a name to be disrespectful. <laughs> I don't want to name a club. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can use it at mid-table FC. Um, <laughs> right. We're obviously going to going to go through it. We're going to describe exactly where the players' positions are on the uh, yeah. on, on the on the pitch. We're going to look at the instructions. Obviously, we're going to get the video up on YouTube. If you do want to have a look at it towards the end of the week, they will be there. Uh, search the Football Manager Show by the Athletic on YouTube, then you'll get to see the video. Um, but otherwise, we'll be as descriptive as we possibly can. Okay, so <laughs> Aaron, goalkeeper, defend, flat back four. Talk to us through these these rules we're going to be doing here. So we're going to start off. Should we start off with the instructions or the player? So I'm actually going to start off. I'm going to start with the uh, instructions. So with the mentality, we're going to go for attacking. So we want the ball to be played in the opposition's half. We want to get the strikers involved, but also those two central midfielders forward and those wide fullbacks as well to get further forward. We're going to play out from the back because we want it to be possession-based. Passing directness is going to be knocked all the way down to shorter. But for the tempo, we're going to operate with a slightly higher tempo just so we can get the ball from back to front fairly quickly. And attacking width, Set to fairly narrow because we've got a very, very narrow shape and we're just trying to complement the shape as best as possible. And then also dribbling as well. Like I said, it's kind of for all teams. It's what, we want it to be suited for all teams. So we're going to have a possession-based style of play, but also we're going to add some more directness into play as well because, of course, we have no wingers directly running at the defenders. So we're going to add that instruction on dribbling, run at the fence. Now, moving into transition when possession has been lost, we want to be proactive rather than reactive. So we're going to counter press, try and win the ball back as soon as possible. When possession has been won, now I'm actually going to leave this blank. Or you can use hold shape, but I'm going to leave it blank because it gives us that flexibility. If the game's going wrong, we can switch to counter or we could just continue. We kind of have a more focus, greater focus on holding our shape. The reason being is just so we don't kind of lose our four midfield shape because this actually helps us defensively really really well so i'm gonna hold our shape <laughs> for this video mm. and for the podcast and then when the goalkeeper is in distribution or in possession he's going to distribute it to the center backs because if he distributes it to the full backs the full backs will have the ball but will have little options when looking ahead they will have the touch line on the left hand side and then no one straight ahead of them whereas the center back will have the option to play it wide to a full back or ahead of them to a holding midfielder lastly out of possession we're actually going to use a mid block nothing overly aggressive because not every team can handle that aggressive football the trigger press though will be on more often and prevent short goal keeper distribution and that there it's the team instructions. We are set up possession based, but we have added some little direct play at running at the defence in there. Mm, okay, so there's one thing that this jumped out at me straight away, and um, is when you've got your transition uh, section. Now yeah. you, you have gone with hold shape. Now, not something I've used a lot to be honest, and I'm sure maybe some of our listeners haven't used it a lot either. I think the natural yeah. inclination is to hit counter when possession's <laughs> been won, hit counter attack. But as you described. If you hit counter-attack, you're going to have players drifting from position. So although yeah. we want we want this narrow shape, when we counter-attack still narrow, then that means that, as you say, when the ball comes back, we've not got midfielders spread out wide into, into wide areas. Is that the thinking behind it? Exactly. So if we win the ball back and we're going to go on a counter-attack, you'll also notice with some of the roles as well, spoiler alert, I will be adding a Mazala. So if we go on a counter-attack that Mazala could possibly just instantly roam. So the Mazala will look to roam from his position anyway, but we want this to be timed as well. We don't want it just to be at any given time. So once we do win the ball, we don't want the 
the central midfielders just to be moving from their position and the wing backs obviously will look to get further forward. The strikers will be doing what the striker wants to be doing. So actually we'll be losing our shape, but it's not what we want to happen because if we do lose the ball again, actually the opposition on the break can hurt us because we have no wingers. So they can either just attack down the wider areas where we're all disorganized or they can attack central areas as well where again we'll be disorganized if the central midfielders have decided to leave their position too early mm. and to be honest I don't know it might sound like a bit of a cop out now now that you've said it but I was actually thinking in terms of Mazala's because they, they are going to drift and I was just like <laughs> I wonder if he's going to use a Mazala here because that's why he's holding the shape because you don't want them moving out if they're then going to be counter-attacking so all right there you go exactly, we've already yeah. won the Tony tactics here um, <laughs> so let's get on to it then let's look at some roles at present yes. so for the audio listeners we've got that flat back four two at the minute we're setting two defensive midfielders so in the sort of the next step up and then we're set two centre midfielders on the halfway line then we've got that gap for where the AMs tend to go in and then our strikers but you say that there's fluidity you can move your halfway line centre midfielders up into those sort of support yes. striker shallow striker AMC roles if needs be yeah yeah exactly that and then in goal we will be using a sweeper keeper that's kind of standard for possession that's kind of the standard role in football manager <laughs> I think many people just go straight for the super keeper and then the left side the central uh, defender will be a ball playing defender. We're going to have someone that is comfortable with the ball, but can also bring the ball forward and play some counter-attacking passes if they're on. And his central defensive um, partner will be just a central defender on defence, someone that's more composed in possession, looking to hold onto the ball and just recycle it. The left back is going to be a wing back on attack. He's going to be looking to get further forward and support play because, of course, we need some width. <laughs> we ain't going to have any sort of wingers there. So both full backs are going to be wing backs. But the one on the left is on attack. The one on the right is on support. And then we're going to move slightly ahead into the defensive midfield area. We're going to have a halfback, someone that's just going to drop deep, look to collect the ball from the central defenders. And what tends to happen is they will drop or he would drop in between the two. The two central defenders will split, and this also allows the wing backs to advance higher up the pitch as well. And then his partner is going to be a deep line playmaker on support. So actually, what we've got here is two holding midfielders that like to hold their position. And this is one reason why a box formation can be very, very strong in defence. So we've got a, a halfback just protecting the back line. And then we've also got a defensive or a deep line playmaker holding his position again in front of that back line. It can be very very difficult to break down which then goes back to our point about the counter if we'd use the counter attack and then the two central midfielders go and then one of the defensive midfielders go then suddenly we've lost that very organized defensive structure now moving into uh, midfield we on the right hand side we're going to use a mazala on attack now this is one reason why we've got the wing back on support because we can also rely on the mazala to drift out and um, help the wing back on the right hand side and again going back to that counter <laughs> counter attacking instruction when we do win the ball you will notice the Mazzala will pick his moments and just look to support the wing back on the right hand side as well rather than just you've won the ball and he's instantly gone we want him to actually support the play it's very important for him to support the right um wing back so he's not isolated and then on the left hand side of the central midfield we're just gonna have a central midfielder on attack running making that forward run inside the box the Mazzala will kind of use that right half space whereas the central midfielder will look to attack the box and then lastly up front we've got a pressing forward on support on the right hand side this he was going to hold up the ball he can hold up the ball for the Mazzala or he can hold up the ball for the central midfielder and then on the left hand side we have a deep line forward on attack another supportive role sort of because he's still a deep line forward dropping deep to receive the ball but he will also look to score goals move into the channels as well hopefully moving into the left channel and that would also supply the wing back with some support on the left hand side. Mm, interesting, interesting. I'll be honest, I've never used a DLF on attack, uh, to be honest. So that sort of instantly made <laughs> me like, oh, because my initial it's one thought of my would favorite. have been that, yeah, deep line, deep line forward on support, pressing forward on attack. But that makes much more sense now you've explained it to say that you will <laughs> still be looking to press forward. Um, now, obviously, you said there that you've got these potential changes with regards to these these middle two players, our central midfielder on attack, our Mazala on attack. Yeah. If we wanted to move them into those more attacking spaces. Yeah. Would you keep the same roles or would you look for, for a different role there as you move them yeah, into so the, for the, the next step up, essentially? So for the left side of the central midfield, if I'm looking to grab a goal, it's got to be a shadow striker. Someone that's is very aggressive getting into the box. 
But if not, if I'm looking to start with this sort of shape, then I would use an attacking midfielder on attack. Someone that kind of positions himself in that attacking midfield area. And then as play progresses, he will look to get into the box, especially if your wide uh, fullbacks have got the ball in the wider areas, he's going to look to put himself inside the box. And then for the Mazzala, if I move it into attacking midfield, I will be looking to use an advanced playmaker. Now, he's going to be a little bit different, behave a little bit different because now the ball is going to be more attracted to him we're going to be looking to use him more because he's now our playmaker but similar to a Mazzala they would like to move they don't like just to stay in that position they will move around so if your wing back has the ball on the right hand side again your advanced playmaker will look to just slightly shift over to that side and apply apply and <laughs> support your wing back on the right hand side mm, so that's interesting the double playmaker on on the same side are they yeah is that sort of like so you get the overload essentially then you can switch play to those to the left hand side with that wing back on attacks bombing on and the attacking midfielders bombing on and the dlf yeah, sort that, of doing his stuff that could happen it wasn't really or wouldn't be really the intention so what in my thinking is you've got again you've got the build-up play then you've got your middle third and then you've got the final third so mm -hmm. We're ho obviously hoping that the deal, the DLP is not going to be in that advanced area where now we're focusing on playing to both playmakers. The deep line playmaker is going to be there. So when we're building up from the back, we're going to rely on him to help us with our progression. And then when, we, when we're moving into that sort of mid third to attacking third, then we're more relying on the advanced playmaker to then dictate the tempo for us. But a lot, because we don't really have a focus, so there will be more of a natural focus to the right hand side. But in general, we don't really have a focus. It's still going to be more central play because that is where majority of the bodies are. So even though it's slightly on the right-hand side, I doubt the ball will be more attracted to the actual right side of the pitch. It's still going to be more into that central area. Mm. Okay, no, that makes complete sense to be honest. And just as we start to wrap this up, people are looking at this tactic thinking this is a good idea. They want to try it out. Very, very quickly, what sort of players do we need for it? I'm guessing we need players who are dynamic. Are they going to put a shift in? Do we need creative players? Yeah, so, well, I use something similar. Not the exact same thing, but something similar. And what actually helps is, well, your two defensive midfielders, I mean, if they're good in the air, that is a who's bonus because you will notice if your, fr uh, your front two are pressing, even though we're not really high pressing, we're still looking to force errors, especially preventing their short goalkeeper distribution. And what actually tends to happen is they look to kick the ball long and you kind of expect your centre-backs to be having good jumping reach. But if your defensive midfielders have also good jumping reach and just good anticipation reading of the game, you win the ball a lot and recover the ball a lot in that sort of area. And it's dangerous because then you can kind of just play to your more attacking players. This is what your holding midfielders will do. Look for your attacking players, your attacking midfielder, your playmaker or Mazala, and then your team will then go and create. Hopefully, the opposition team have this, well, they've been disorganized. So I would actually look for some really physical defensive midfielders, fast, so they can free the game, intercept play, and also big as well, tall, so they can win the ball in the air. And the wing backs are very, very important. The full backs, they have no support ahead of them. So they need to be good at dribbling, crossing, have good off the ball movement, but also decent defenders. I wouldn't say the best defenders. They don't have to be the Ashley Coles of the <laughs> fullbacks when it comes to defending, but someone that can, I mean, he's not going to lose every one-on-one -on -one duel. Yeah, interesting. All right, cool. Well, you know what? I'm excited about this because I have tried a Brazilian box before. Those tweaks, though, make a lot more sense to me now that I've seen it out uh, explained to me. Um, anyone yeah. who's listening, feel free to have a go. Let us know how you get on. Let us know who you do the tactic with and, and the team you're using and all that sort of stuff. Um, do, of course, feel free to get in touch, particularly... If you want your tactic ran through the tactics garage. Now, obviously, what we do at that point is we ask you to tweet us a screenshot, which is at RDF Tactics. It's at Tony Jameson. Tweet us a picture of your tactic, but more importantly, tell us what is wrong with it. And maybe next time or in the future, the tactics garage will be open for you. <laughs>